You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it with tales from all over the nation. Come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hi, Murph. Hey there, AP. How's it going? Oh, fantastic. I mean, do you realize it's been almost a month since Ragbri? Oh, my gosh. I mean, have you have you been on your bike? Now, I know this is kind of a personal question, but have you been on your bike since Ragbri? Oh, come on. Of course I have. But I will say mostly social rides mm. and then commuting, like to get groceries and stuff like that. Um, but I am getting ready to do a, a fairly significant like camp bike event. So let's call it bike packing mm. um, with some friends this weekend. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. How about you? Uh, well, I have, a, I'm about the same as you, just mostly casual riding. Um, yeah. I don't have any bikepacking events planned, but as you know, I live in Des Moines, so the state fair is going on right now. Woohoo, the state fair. Uh I went with you last year about this time and had so much fun, and dare I say, it was maybe the first time I had been to the fair. Wow. Yeah, no, I I usually go multiple times per year, and they have a really great bike parking section where you can come into the gate and lock up your bike. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And you know, if they have the butter cow, because when we were in the Tama Toledo area for Ragbri, that's where the butter cow lady was from. And Mm. there's a sculpture, like a permanent sculpture. I don't think it was made of butter, but it was on display there. I got my picture taken with it. But I hear in addition to the butter cow at the state fair, there is a butter Caitlin Clark. Number 22. Let's go. I can't wait to see it. (laughs) Uh, I'm heading to the fair tomorrow. So that's... On the top of my list of things to see. Okay. All right. Yeah. So before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to say that I have finished going through the Ragbri Lost and Found. So anyone who's reached out and sent an email to either myself or to info at ragbri.com should have got a response by now either saying, hey, we've got your stuff or hey, we don't got your stuff. Um, So, you know, working through that. And then I'm about to post the picture on social media where it shows all the different things that we still have in the lost and found. Can you give us a, like a sneak peek of some of the stuff that was turned in? Yeah. Well, it's a larger amount of items than we've ever had before. I would say we have about eight to 10 helmets. We have about the same number of bike computers. And you know, the funny thing about the bike computers is that they're almost all cat eyes. So mm. something about the cat eye, they don't, <laughs> they must not stick onto the bike as securely as other bike computers. Interesting. Yeah, so we have a lot of those. We have some camping equipment, obviously, and some clothing, obviously. Um, A lot of earbuds. A lot of... Mm. um, We have, like, a big flag. It's not as exciting as you would think. Were there any wallets turned in this year? There are about 25 wallets. I have gone through all... Yeah, 25 wallets. So I've gone through all the wallets, and anyone who's registered, I mailed it back immediately. Anyone who wasn't registered... Uh, I, it's on its way back to you through a slower means of transportation. So mm. say it that way. But because Lost and Found is really for registered riders. But I'm right. not going to hold on to anybody's wallet or anybody's cell phone or anything valuable. I'm not like that. But you really should register. And it's the fastest way to get stuff shipped back to you for free. Yeah. And it's, I mean, there were thousands and thousands of people. But the fact that 25 wallets, A, were lost and yep. then B, turned into Lost and Found. Like yeah. that. That is one more example of Iowa nice. I know. I just found one that was, I didn't see it earlier and it was because it was inside of a duffel bag and I was trying to identify the owner, which I did and everything is cool. But like there was over $200 in there that somebody just turned back into the lost and found. And that's just one example. I mean, most of the wallets had cash in them. Not every one of them, but most of them did. So wow. um, we also had about a half a dozen cell phones and those have all been identified and they were all for registered riders, so I was able to send them back. So that's awesome. Um, so well, thanks for all you do with that because that's, I mean, that's a full time job in itself once you get back. Ooh, it has been uh, a lot this year. Usually it's not a big deal and it's always fun. So I always enjoy it. I always love getting stuff back to people because, you know, you want your gear. So I do enjoy right. it and it's, um, I do look forward to it. I come back the day after the ride's over and I start going through it. <laughs> Everyone's like, you should take a break. And I'm like, no, they need their phones. (laughs) (laughs) 
So anyway. That's right. Anyway. That's so right. Take a look at Facebook. By the time this is posted online, you'll see on the Ragbri Facebook page and the Ragbri blog that there'll be images if you're missing anything. Or always feel okay. free to reach out. So Okay. Cool. Um, back on track. Uh, what do we have for today's episode? Okay. Well... Um, as you know, after Ragbri put out the request to interview first time riders to get their take on their first time biking across the state and how it went. Yeah. And this is part two in the series. I last week we got so many positive comments about our three people that uh, we featured in that episode. So we're going to do it again. That's so cool that we got so many responses. I love that. I can't wait to hear more. Yeah, we did. And Every single person I interviewed had like a really unique and interesting story. Mm. So do you want me to tell you about briefly about the interviews that are on this episode? Just yeah, just a little sneak preview. Okay, so we're going to interview or you're you're going to hear my interview with Drew, who several years ago at age 27 survived a heart attack. And now that he's healthy, he decided he was going to tackle his first rag bri this year. And he did it. So that is an amazing story. And then Kelly, who described the experience as phenomenal. And Charles, who rode rag bri solo and absolutely loved it. Mm. And lastly, you'll hear about Taylor, another survival story. Not a heart attack, but this one is about mountain biking and a broken neck. Oh, my God. (laughs) Wow. I can't wait. All of of that occurred before Ragbri. Oh, good. Okay, good. Well, if you're riding Ragbri on a mountain bike, you're making it difficult on yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I did it. I did it probably like five years when I first started. Yeah, me too. I did four years when I first started, and that's how I know (laughs) that you're making it difficult on yourself. (laughs) Exactly. Well, I can't wait to hear from Drew, Kelly, Charles, and Taylor. Let's get to it. Well, up next, let's welcome Drew to the podcast. How's it going, Drew? Doing great, Murph. How are you? I'm good. I was super intrigued when I read your little blurb uh, when you emailed us about wanting to be on the podcast. And I think this is going to be a really, really like important message for listeners to hear. I don't know. Got to, got to get prepared. I, I hope <laughs> I don't disappoint. Yeah. Well, before we get into it, do you want to tell the listeners where you live and maybe if there's a certain cycling culture there? Sure. Uh, I live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin these days. Um, plenty of biking around here. Uh, Lake Michigan is obviously very pretty, but uh, mm-hmm. folks around here took advantage of making as many bike paths as possible near the lake, uh, but also into a lot of the conjoining cities around uh, Milwaukee. Hmm. So, yeah, and I, you know, I grew up in Eldridge, Iowa, so I'm I'm definitely (laughs) uh, familiar with Ragbri, but uh, having lived a few different places in the Midwest, I'm still happy to call Iowa home, but definitely in Milwaukee, Wisconsin these days. Yeah. And was this truly your first Ragbri? Truly my first one. Wow. Uh, The first one I I witnessed as, as a young man in 2008, I guess I wasn't that young. Uh, uh, before going into high school, I saw them go through Eldridge, Iowa. That would have been, I imagine there's only one or two legs left uh, on the way to LeClaire back mm-hmm. in 2008. I thought, that's weird. Uh, and then I ran the Big Seven that day. But <laughs> this is the the first one this year I've ever ridden. So it's it's been a, quite the journey since then. Wow. Well, and quite the journey before then. Um, so I won't spoil it too much, but you had kind of a... I don't know if a medical scare is the right word, a life-changing event happened uh, several years ago. Do you want to tell the listeners how, you know, what happened and then how you went from that moment to, I'm going to ride my bike 500 miles across <laughs> Iowa? <laughs> yes. Uh, for the sake of listeners, I'll try to make it a, a fast line. Um, so lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Weirdly enough, I was visiting my parents uh, March of 2020. And what I thought was going to be a weekend visit with my uh, fiance, now wife, turned into a three-month venture. Uh, Between that and May of 2020, I noticed I was just starting to give him some weird chest discomfort. And after doing a few teledoc things, because there wasn't a lot of in-person stuff, I Mm. went to the ER and they said, no, we should probably do some blood work on you. And it it wasn't a cool scene from ER or anything like that, but they just said, like, oh, your right coronary artery is completely cut off <laughs> like it's just it's clogged there's a there's a clot there wow i said that's strange for a few reasons like one i'm i'm 27 years old mm. and uh 
too. I, I just ran a marathon a few months ago. I like to think I'm a fairly healthy person. And, you know, so it, it, that was definitely a record screech moment in my life. I, I had just gotten engaged with my uh, I guess then fiance, now wife, and thought, oh, like, can, can I do, can I run anymore? Can I do anything athletic much at all? Like, if this is 27 for me, what's 37 going to be like? And, you know, that really kind of came to a head. And it was just ultra weird on top of that. But I was like, oh, I'm, I'm in Genesis East in Davenport. Like, <laughs> this, I, I don't live here. I've not lived in Iowa since I was in high school. So yeah. that was a very weird, sobering week. Um, you know, th this is a happy ending, though. I, I'm, I'm since doing much better. It's still kind of this weird medical anomaly, according to my uh, doctors and uh, cardiologists. But gradually, I started getting uh, back into exercise and um you know, ever since moving away from Iowa, you kind of get this more romantic idea of what home is. And, right. you know, when Ragbri came a knock in year 50 uh, and hit all the stops, like I, you know, I was born in Des Moines, grew up in the Quad Cities and spent just a whole bunch of Saturdays in Coralville and Iowa City. Mm. Like, okay, yeah, this, this seems about right. And I had a buddy of mine from LA who had done it two times earlier and said, this is the year. And I said, okay, makes sense. Uh, just one problem. I, I just became a dad in December. Uh, my, uh, I, I'm probably going to say this. Uh, I don't think I could say this enough times. My wife has been an absolute champion. Uh, she knew this was going to be really meaningful for me to try doing uh, rag rye uh, just because I like riding my bike, but also this, just how, how the last few years have gone. Both my parents were also able to be hospitable to my wife and my daughter, and they allowed this whole week to happen. So I, I deep gratitude to all of them and um, probably one of the reasons why finishing in Davenport on top of everything I just mentioned was a very emotional experience. Right. And just, you know, the general, um, you know, you're, you have a heart attack at age 27, mm -hmm. but you uh, are able to turn that around, become a husband, become a father. And I'm assuming that you are still running. Yeah. I running with a stroller these days. That's a fun uh, yeah. little uh, addition to the whole thing, but yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a high school teacher and I've, um, started getting into coaching as well so coaching cross country and track so now we're, we're we've taken several big steps from that uh, scary stretch in 2020 and things are a lot better but it's those like seminal moments just you know finishing and seeing the quad cities uh, at the end of a 500 mile venture including the century day and just overcoming all that and by all that i really just mean des moines to tama toledo because oh buddy that was a <laughs> that was a doozy of a <laughs> yes, day yes it was uh it was it was a very and just a meaningful trip. I, I don't know if I could really pull out my thesaurus and describe it <laughs> any differently than that. But yeah, well, I, I for one, I'm, you know, happy to be able to meet you, uh, even if it's just over the phone in these sorts of circumstances, because things could have been a lot worse. You know what I mean? Like you could yeah. be, um, you know, maybe your doctors would say no more running, no more biking, no more exercise. Um, but yet here you are. So you yeah. oh. survived your, well, you survived a heart attack and now you have survived your first rag bride. Do you want to kind of <laughs> tell us some, maybe some highlights? Uh, absolutely. Um, I guess going back a little bit, my first introduction to just like cycling as like a really fun thing to do uh, goes back to Council Bluffs. Um, I'm a Creighton uh, graduate in Omaha, Nebraska, but one of my buddies who was on my team told me about this uh, thing called Taco Ride. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, yeah, every Thursday in the summer in Council Bluffs, they go up the Wabash Trail to, it's Mineola, Iowa. I apologize if I uh, got the wrong town, but they go to a little restaurant called Toby Jack's and they eat tacos after riding 10 miles uh, on the way there. And there's a lot of uh, debauchery and such. And then you come back and <laughs> my buddy well, told me, yeah, rag ride's that, but longer but and like camping. <laughs> And I said, that sounds great. Let's do that at some point. Um, <laughs> so I guess the fact that it was basically just uh, seven days of taco ride was exactly what I wanted, but also <laughs> just people people being good to each other. I, I've lived with Iowa nice and I was happy to see that in full form. Um, but just, and also the people who aren't from Iowa or just people who are on the ride looking around uh, somewhere between Oxford and Coralville saying, gosh, it's pretty out here. Like, oh, wow, it's, it's so beautiful looking over these hills. And mm -hmm. uh, as someone who's lived out of Iowa and just gets giddy about, guys, have you heard about this place called Iowa? Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, it's just full of uh, very nice people and pretty landscape. And seeing people enjoy that, just it, was, it made me giddy. Yeah, and being, you know, a fellow Midwesterner, 
um, it's not novel to see fields of corn and soybean, you know, every day of your life. Right. And to some of these people, it was just mind blowing. Like, what? There's no skyscrapers. There's, you know, there's, it's a whole different um, level of calmness and peace that, yeah. uh, you know, people don't experience. But I wanted to touch base on the taco ride. I got to do that a couple years ago. And my experience with the taco ride, yes, it was a little bit of debauchery and craziness, but it poured down rain. And so that trail, <laughs> is it the Wabash Trace? Wabash Trail, yeah. Yeah, dirt, it, dirt road. it became mud. <laughs> and we got to that restaurant you spoke of. And they had put garbage bags on all of the seats because we were all super wet and dirty. And they asked us to take our shoes off at the door. So it was like oh. hilarious. We got done, had a blast, you know, ate tacos and drank. And then you go back to the front door to get your shoes. And there's, you know, they're all mud. So you're like, oh, my God, I don't remember exactly what my shoes look like. And everyone else was in the same boat. But that was oh. a heck of an experience. There are a few certainties in life, but one of them is that it will inevitably rain on you during taco, right? I probably should have, <laughs> should have mentioned that. My, my wife and I made that part of our uh, wedding week, actually. We got married over Memorial Day weekend uh, back in 2021, but that Thursday night, we brought the family and said, we're doing taco ride. Sure enough, it was 55 degrees and rainy. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's a little cold, and I'm just thinking, aren't we having fun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and well, we were, gosh dang it. But, that's awesome. You know. Well, knowing um, you saw Ragbri, you know, when you're getting ready for high school, and of course you have friends who have done Ragbri, was this year what you expected? Uh, yes and no. Uh, column A and column B. Um, you know, as someone who's familiar with these host, city, host cities, I, I kind of planted a certain picture in my head of what Ragbri was going to be like. Mm -hmm. I just, I've been to, I think I've been to all those host cities at least once, maybe not Tama, Toledo. Um, but it just, I think what immediately occurred to me is like, oh, things are different when you're riding a bike. Uh, you, you feel a little bit smaller and you're kind of zooming uh, between people. So just, you know, like with anyone who plans a family vacation or something, you have an idea of, you know, like I looked up the restaurants, looked at the menus, and you have a sense of how things are going to go. But, you know, once you actually get there, it's completely different. Um, this was one of my first camping ventures in a few years. Oh. Um, so it went fairly smoothly, uh, Coralville notwithstanding. We had a little bit of a tent issue at the very end of that, but nothing nothing catastrophic. My, my pillow got a little bit wet, but I'm certainly not going to complain after an otherwise very successful week. Um, but as far as all the other things, I, you know, I, I went about what I thought it was going to be like. I'm just going to see a lot of people excited to ride and kind of get to know each other. But just seeing the actual execution of that was you know, novel. It couldn't help it be novel because I'd never done this before. Sure, yeah. And uh, let's fast forward maybe 10, 15 years. Do you think you'll take your little one on Ragbri in the future? I, I'd love to. Uh, if for no other reason, I'd like to get humbled by a bunch of much younger people going up these hills much faster than I did. Yes. Uh, it's like, maybe that'll be my daughter someday. Like, oh, yeah. Bad, but, you have to uh, wonder, love... like 15 years from now, like, will everybody have e-bikes or what, like, just what will bicycles be like you know what's what's lighter than carbon or titanium that people will yeah, be yeah. experiencing well, it was fun watching some footage from the rag by youtube page from like the 73 ride and onward and it's like oh I, I think i've seen some pretty old rides or bikes just like that on my own ride but yeah with innovations of e-bikes i think that makes it way more accessible for a lot more people and I, you know i'm kind of in the more of the merrier camp myself but yeah I, it would not surprise me if there's a lot more youngsters uh finding themselves able to enjoy rag break yeah definitely well uh, do you think you'll come back next year if you can uh i would love to i would love to uh <laughs> i i, I want to prioritize being a good dad i i know that uh just these you know poetic weeks like i just had uh require a lot of work from people who aren't me so if the logistics line up that'd be wonderful um if nothing else, I'm definitely making plans for, as you say, a few years down the road that will include my entire family and not just me. I, I will say this year is going to be a tough one to beat. Um, yeah. I, I felt awfully accomplished at the end of this, uh, not just because of the last few years, but because, it, you know, it was a challenge. I, right. I think you had the, the four H's, three H's, um, I, I, those were definitely all at play. Uh, humidity, especially, again, from Des Moines to Tama Toledo. Um, but now that we've accomplished that, got 500 miles in and 
got the century right in. I feel like the rest of this is just kind of playing with house money. So uh, whether it's next year or in the future, I will definitely have Red Rye in the future. Yeah, and I think you can um, go ahead and add an, an extra H to the H's and say, you know, your heart and how oh, thankful oh. you have to be that, A, you know, you have the the warmth of other people in your family helping you out, you know, their hearts, but also physically, like you did it. No, I, my, my heart was very full uh, yeah. this past week. And I mean that in a uh, romantic way and not in a uh, physiological uh, emergency kind sure. of way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness, right? Thank goodness. <laughs> well, Drew, I appreciate you coming on the podcast to share your story. And uh, I'll speak on behalf of all the riders. We're really glad that you are a healthy person and you can move forward with the next big adventure. Oh, thanks so much. And, and thanks so much for the podcast. I, I know it might be a labor of love for you, but it sure was helpful this week for me and I'm sure countless others. So keep up the good work and work and I'll definitely be downloading in the future. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Drew. Thanks so much. I would like to welcome Kelly and Craig to the podcast. Hello, guys. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready to tell everybody about your Ragbri experience for Ragbri L? We are. Good. Was it your very first time being on Ragbri? It was our very first Ragbri. Wow. All right. Well, before you get into the nitty gritty of how your Ragbri was, will you tell the listeners where you live and maybe if there's a cycling culture there? Uh, we live in uh, northeastern Kentucky. Uh, hmm. It's a tri-state area of Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. So we're right on the Ohio River. Um, we have, I guess, within our small world, a cycling culture. We're part of a cycling club called ACE, Ashland Cycling Enthusiast. Hmm. Um, but as far as a cycling culture, like having good bike lanes or an environment or um, that ha that really you know, encourages cycling in our area, I would say no. <laughs> mm, okay. So then um, how did you guys go about getting some training rides in before coming to Iowa? Um, like I said, we're part of a club and we um, do kind of regular rides uh, anyways uh, on like Tuesdays, Thursdays with our group. We do have some routes there on public roads. Um, so, and we did uh, a few cycling events, actually, mm. uh, a couple of metrics and cycling events that were offered um, nearby okay. before we did ride by. So here you are doing your thing with the ACE Club and just doing rides around your area. What made you decide that I'm going to go to Iowa and ride 500 miles across the state? Well, I'll let Craig chime in too, but um, for me, the, what really kind of finally kicked it off after he had talked about it was uh, a gentleman in our club that just said, you know, if you consider yourself a cyclist, you really have to do rag ride. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of a competitive person, so I was like, okay, challenge accepted. Um, <laughs> I, have a, uh, I have a friend who was raised in Iowa. Uh, I met him through work. His name's Matt Finn. And uh, some years ago, he told me about Ragbri, and he said, you, you know, you need to come out and ride and experience the, the people and the, the fun and the food. And so he kind of tipped me off to it first, and then through the, through the conversations of you need to do, do Ragbri, we decided just to come on out and see what it was all about. And let's be honest, you picked a doozy of a year to come do it because it was, you know, obviously we know about the heat and the headwinds and the hills. So give us an idea of, you know, was Ragbri what you expected? Um, you know, the heat, headwind, and hills were kind of like background issues for us. We kind of knew all those things could be in the game mm -hmm. but really for us i think the biggest and we listen i listen to your podcast quite a bit i think the biggest concern for us was just going to be the crowds this year that was kind of an unknown factor mm -hmm. and so i was probably mostly concerned just about the crowds and how it could be not just not really even just logistics just for me personally riding in that much of a crowd and how that can i've had a few uh cycling accidents so 
you know, I just wanted to stay upright, not on the pavement mostly was my biggest concern. (laughs) Yeah, that's, and that's a valid one. I know, um, you know, and everybody's experience is different, but Um, the first day was the only day that I got into some really big crowds where we were crossing over some railroad tracks and everybody had to walk. Um, But I I must have just found a sweet spot the rest of the week because I got up a little bit later and got on the road a little bit later. And so I was in pretty good shape as far as not having to get in such a crowded area that I was walking. But how was your experience? That was the same for us. Uh, first day, like you said, those railroad track crossings initially, I think the first like 10 miles that day was pretty crowded and I was a little, and then it kind of thinned out after the first few stops um, to where it wasn't, you know, um, back-to-back cyclists. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we kind of did the opposite that you did. We got up earlier ah. the next few days. And so, like you said, we were kind of, I wouldn't say by ourselves, but definitely had plenty of room. Um, to cycle and cycle safely the rest of the week pretty much we weren't we didn't find ourselves too cramped Mm -hmm. most of the time I definitely I don't know if you felt the same but when you know you get around that first corner where those tracks were like you said it was maybe 10 miles into the day I was like am I gonna spend my whole week walking my bike this is gonna be crazy but uh, that was you know that was a short-lived thought process and it didn't happen so thank goodness there but do you want to share some like uh, memorable things that happened on your rag bry week? Um, mine would be the storm. Um, I happened to have a friend say, there's a storm moving in in a few hours, we think. If you're going to get a shower, you might want to do that. So I headed to the shower truck, walked right in. It was still sunny, breezy, very breezy, but sunny out. Uh, there were some clouds, and so... Got in the shower truck and within like five minutes, they had a public radio playing in there and there were these storm warnings that came across the radio um, saying like 50 mile, moving 50 miles per hour. So I was like, okay, that's pretty fast. I need to hurry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really didn't have time. Um, I hurried, but I wasn't out of the shower truck yet. I um, was just trying to get dressed. And then I heard some people screaming and heard people saying our tents are, go- are going. And the truck actually shook pretty good, oh like rock kind of threw me into the door. And so I grabbed my bag and went out and it looked like a scene from the tornado mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> like there was like garbage cans flying through the air and Um, I had to make a decision whether to try to run for it. So I I did because I definitely didn't feel safe in the shower truck. So I took off running back to our, towards our camp area and everyone had disappeared. Everyone was gone. Mm. Um, So I looked down a sidewalk. There was a subdivision close by and I started running down the sidewalk towards the subdivision. And uh, a man just came out of nowhere, a gentleman and said, go to my house, go to my house. Mm. And I just, he just pointed to his house and I took off running. And so it actually ended up being a great experience. We spent about an hour, a little over an hour and a half maybe there at their home and visited with this nice young couple that had three kids. And there was like six of us there. Um, and it, you know, ended up we were really safe and had a really enjoyable time visiting with them. And it was just a really, I mean, scary initially, but it ended up being an awesome memory because, you know, of how nice the Iowa p- people are and how welcoming. And, you know, the man was out in the middle of this terrible storm trying to get people to go to his house. So it was kind of amazing. It's so interesting how you meet people, I guess in life, you know, you could say this, but Ragbri specifically where, you know, you might just be in line with somebody and then before you know it, you, your best friends exchanging emails, you know, showing each other pictures of family. Um, And like your example, where a man's in the middle of the street saying, come get in our house, you know, be safe from the storms. That's a good story. And how about you, Craig? Do you have any memorable moments you want to share? Well, I I think the thing that stood out to me really the most, um, you know, like Kelly said, the people and the attitudes and everybody just enjoying the week having a good time and uh you know letting uh, anything other than a good time and and a good experience go by the wayside you know that that was the that was the focus i think for everybody there was just enjoying the week enjoying the ride and you know the opportunity to see all the different 
bicycles anywhere from a from a very expensive TT bike to a Walmart shelf bike mm-hmm. to a you know a unicycle or whatever somebody had in mind to get on and ride. It was uh, it was just a a really unusual cycling experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess I've asked this question a couple of times, but have either of you been on your bike since? Or are you still taking a break oh, from yeah. cycling? Yeah, we rode. We got home on Sunday, and we rode on Wednesday with some of our friends. Um, did kind of one of our regular routes on Wednesday. I will admit that I was feeling very fatigued about twenty miles in. We did a, like a thirty mile ride, and mm-hmm. about twenty miles in, I was like, "Ooh, I'm not quite recovered yet." So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, I've done the same thing where I've gone on some longer rides, and it's just like. Okay, maybe I do need to chill out a few more days, but yeah, it's hard to go back to not biking, you know, once you've experienced something like Ragbri because it's all you have to do for seven days in a row. So, yeah, exactly. Um, getting up every day, I think by day, you know, by the seventh day, it's just kind of like any kind of ultra event, backpacking. We like to backpack. Um, once you get in kind of your body and your mind gets into that mode, that this is what I'm doing every day. It's kind of hard to break the cycle. So, um, definitely was weird, uh, first few days that we weren't getting up and cycling <laughs> to another town. <laughs> right. Right. Well, do you, either of you think you'll come back to Iowa and do it again in the future? Uh, we talked about that. Um, we have a lar- long bucket list of things. Yeah. We have bicycled across Ohio and, We've uh, done some things out west, um, some cycling adventures, and we still got a list. So it's not the fact that, like, we didn't like it or wouldn't do it again. It's just do we have the time to do it again versus some another experience. Yeah, there's so um, many other things so, to explore in the United States as far as cycling. Yeah, and actually, you know, it um, not I wasn't I knew the effort that it was going to take, but I mean, you definitely I think need to train mm-hmm. for Ragbri, which we we probably didn't get to train as much as we would have liked to, and uh, like we would have in in previous years, other cycling things that we did, we probably had more training in, but um, it's definitely a challenge. Um, I mean, you definitely have to plan and set aside time to train for it. So, you know, um, it's not just something you say, oh, well, let's get go do rag bar again uh, right. you know, so. <laughs> right. so yeah there's a amount there's a certain amount of time devoted to like training planning and then doing it so it was, you know we'd have to decide do we want to do Iowa again or do we want to do something else so we're kind of on the fence about whether or not we would do it again well, the nice thing is, is you have about 11 months to think about it. I guess you'd have to think about it less than 11 months because of training. But uh, the end of January is when the new route comes out. So maybe let's cross our yeah. fingers. It's a little, maybe some fewer miles and a little less uh, hills, but who knows? Right. We're used to hills in Kentucky. So the hills weren't weren't really terrible I, we didn't think uh, I mean there were just long days mm-hmm. um, yeah just the long it was just the length of the rides probably in the hills not so much the amount of hills we're used to hilly rides mm-hmm. for sure here mm-hmm. uh-huh. well great Kelly and Craig thank you for coming on the podcast and kind of sharing your story and um, I'm glad that you had a great experience here in Iowa okay thank you thank you for uh, letting us share Okay, a warm welcome to Charles. How are you doing today, Charles? I am doing excellent on a Monday morning. Yes, yes. Do you feel like you are fully recovered from your Ragbri 50 experience? Yes. It it took a it took about a day and a half. Uh, It wasn't until that Monday that I got home that it really that Monday morning, uh, and hence why I took a half a day because I woke up and my. 53 year old body says yeah not today (laughs) well something that I've noticed and we talk about it in my cycling community is you know you can physically recover but then there's kind of that mental recovery of like man you know I used to just think about getting up riding my bike go finding a place to sleep where now I have like real life and work obligations and all kinds of stuff 
Oh, yes, uh, most definitely. And a few years ago, I used to do competitive uh, uh, triathlons and Ironmans and till a bad bike accident kind of retired that little that little uh, endeavor. Uh, I wasn't very good at it, but you know what? I tried doing being competitive at it. Yeah, yeah. Well, before we get into talking about Ragbri specifically, will you tell the listeners where you live? I live in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And I've been live. I've lived here now for seven years. Was this your first year of Ragbri? Yes, it was. This was my first Ragbri. Okay. And knowing you're uh, in the St. Louis area, I'm assuming that you had heard about it many, many times. Yes, I, I have, and I've known about it for a few years. But I've been doing other endeavors, and and it's a, a timing trying to commit to the time to spend a week up here not to do that right right and what made you decide that this was the year to do it it was a combination of things of i i had plenty of vacation time and also being the 50th anniversary going all right you know what it's time it's it's time for me to get back into doing things because after my uh, bike accident and uh, take a couple years off of really doing any high endurance endeavor like that i i I didn't want to get back doing doing uh, um, triathlons and, and Ironmans because of the uh, time commitment and mm-hmm. more more than that it's it's the food commitment and anybody who's done any Ironmans can tell you it's not really the exercise it's it's constantly eating food. Well, actually, that sounds pretty pretty good to most people. <laughs> Well, when you do 30 to 40 bananas a week, oh, no, okay, it okay. really doesn't. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and, you know, Ragbri is nothing like training for an Ironman, um, you know, as far as the volume of hours and the, you know, the strenuous workouts that you go through. But when you look at Ragbri, like, do you think that you were prepared? Did you train enough? No. And, and the reason why is, is, and many people have asked me this, the exact same thing. And what it is, is w- with like an Ironman triathlon type com- competitions, it's one day. This is, this is seven days mm-hmm. of uh, not quite the same intensity, but it's not just doing the, you know, six hours or so of riding, but then you have to get your stuff off with me going solo, get my stuff off the truck then carrying it over to finding a tent a tent spot and then putting up the tent and and that's a whole hour in itself so you don't have really the time to recover immediately until you have to find because if you don't start finding your tent spot you are gonna not have a such a great tent spot so it's there's a combination of things that add to the the stress level and and also yet on top of that is you're sleeping in not the greatest conditions Mm -hmm. either in a hot tent you know i mean iowa in 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 the end of july we we all know how i mean we could there was a couple of days that um we were using machetes to cut the humidity (laughs) yeah that that is actually pretty true thursday yeah (laughs) And the Thursday other... was the bad day. <laughs> I dare I say Friday was pretty hot too, even you know before that storm came through. But um, when you're in the tent, the other thing that people may not think about, you know, people that maybe have not done ragbri as far as camping, is that you're surrounded by other tents. So you've got you know people snoring. You've got people unbagging their Ziploc bags, and you know crinkling plastic and then the dreaded zippers of the tent opening and closing all night long that start and and they really started about four o'clock in the morning i never set my after the first day i didn't set my alarm because by 4 30 the zippers you have 80 other people within 50 feet of you that are also opening their zippers Mm -hmm. then and and so that was my I started dreaming about zippers after I got home. I, you know, you're, you're right, what? Um, I think that was always a luxury item. I told people that they should really, you know, it's a very small investment, but to bring earplugs and to bring more than one pair, because if you lose one, 
you're you're really going to be in trouble. Right. Yes. Uh, I I did not, and I I. There was some, uh, some, yeah, I did make some mistakes and it was a, a, uh, one of the, the, uh, the earplugs would have been nice on it. Um, but then I wouldn't have heard my, and you know, I could have just slept run through and then all of a sudden it's 9am oh, and going, yeah. oh crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about what Ragbri is like, uh, doing it solo. Cause you mentioned that, does that mean it, you didn't have family, friends or a team that you were a part of? Right, correct. I, I did not. I, I did it all by myself, um, except for the I, I lucked out in Coralville. My niece and her boyfriend showed up and surprised me. Uh, it was about I think it was about 1230, 1245. Hmm. And they were standing there. Oh, and wow. this is why it worked out even better is, um, well, they had a they stayed at the hotel. They got a room at the Hotel Chancery. A hotel Chauncey Mm -hmm. and um, ended up staying the night there. And that was, and we watched the storm roll across Coralville. I did not have to experience that in a tent. Yeah, that's awesome. The real experience was by myself is I wasn't locked into trying to ride at uh, a certain person's pace or group's pace or, try to oh hey when we get to this town we're going to stop and wait and if i wanted to kind of skip towns um, which i really only did the last day that i kind of rolled through towns because i was i was done i was you know i was ready to get it over with and that um but i could stop when i wanted to stop i could take a little extra time and and i i wasn't there wasn't any kind of time frame that i had to worry about Mm mm-hmm and yet you were still surrounded by thousands and thousands of people. So if you oh. wanted to interact with people, you certainly had the opportunity. Oh, heck yeah. There, I had I literally a couple of hundred five-minute conversations mm-hmm. during, the, um, during the entire week. You just talk to people. And you, you ride at a certain pace. You have your own pace. So you tend to see familiar faces. Mm -hmm. and and it's it's not all they're not all different but you do tend to see i'd probably say there was about a group of a hundred that i would consistently see every day yeah yep i had a similar experience and i always kind of giggled because sometimes i would leave a little bit later in the morning or a little bit earlier but then somehow i would end up with that same um you know pack of people that are kind of on the same uh timeline is me right exactly you know the, you leave the same time you kind of hang out the same same places and and that and and that was one of the things too uh, this was probably my biggest um uh biggest complaint is is i have what's called alpha gal syndrome and it's it's from a tick bite that i've developed a uh, meat allergy mm. uh, and, and so uh, I should say a red meat allergy. So here I am. I decided to do a week long cycling across the pork capital of the world <laughs> and, and me with my pork allergy. So, and, and it's a rather severe allergy for me. So where I have to carry an EpiPen and, and you know, do all that. But um, it was trying to find the options of of um, a vegetarian or a uh, um, options of like or some fish or some chicken and there was a few places uh, but you know what that's my own thing that I have to deal with and Mm -hmm. and over the last couple years I figured out how to deal with it and I just I you you just deal and that's the that's the thing with ragbri is you have to learn to adapt you you just if you expect, if you expect on the rag bri that hey, I'm going to do this this day, this day, this day, I'm going to write this fast. I'm going to no, you're not. <laughs> you you, you got to go with the flow, right? Yeah, yeah, you really do. And and one of the things, and and listening to your podcast, previous podcasts, is that's one of the things that you kind of emphasize is enjoy the go see the rock. You know, see the rock that um, Sorensen that he did Mm -hmm. um there's a couple of towns that i saw some of those rocks and i took pictures you know the ones where he did the murals on the big rocks yeah yeah 
um, like the one in Jefferson. And and, and then in uh, what town was that? Um, there was the reindeer was there and the camel. Yeah, Periwinkle. And, uh, where was that Periwinkle? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, then there was the the um, uh, the gentleman uh, that I I um, it was the tenth time that Ragbri has come through that town in his 35 years he's lived there. And in the past, there was the town had been a overnight town. He's he's um, he, they had hosted people to stay in their you know camp in their yard mm-hmm. and, and use their facilities and that. And he just gushed about it, about how much he enjoyed it and how much he enjoyed meeting people. And that was the big thing is it's just the Iowa niceness that yeah. that you talked about on your podcast in the past is it, it's really there and it's really refreshing. Good. Yeah. I'm glad that you had a good time. And do you think you'll come back and do it again sometime? Oh, oh, yes. So I'm getting in touch with the alumni here at Wash U to try to see if we can organize a Wash U team and to come up because there's got to be other people from Wash U that have ridden. Uh, ridden and there's just been too many graduates of Wash U and too many employees and that that would that are cyclists, especially in a big cycling community as St. Louis is. Right. And so I'm working on going to work with the health and wellness team and and uh, the alumni to see if we can get a, a specific wash U team uh added into for from here on out well make sure you put in your notes that somebody needs to either create a jersey for your school or maybe purchase them because you know college jersey day you'll all want to wear them oh yes ma'am that's what i've already seen them yeah. uh, there was I've, I've seen the right before he did it before it went up there, there was one that came across Facebook that was a Wash U kit. And I was like, well, that's not going to, it wasn't going to make it here until like two months. And I'm like, well, it's a little late now. You showed that to me, showed that ad to me, Facebook, not real good at timing, <laughs> are you? <laughs> well, they're already, they, Facebook assumes that you're going to be back for 2024. So that's, that's what it was. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it is. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, overall, I, I, I really enjoyed the experience. It was, and I know it was a very tough year mm-hmm. and they, they, you know, Matt had said that they kind of purposely made it a tough year because being the 50th. And, and it really was a test of endurance and a test of willpower to, to be able to not walk up any hills. And I, I, you know what, that's, that's, that's not a problem. You know, people that happens, but for my, uh, for my own personal of not walking up any hills Mm -hmm. and not, um, I love being really, really lucky of not having any, any flats or any kind of mechanical issues. Uh, just a few issues that I went up and and uh, thankfully the the rag bribe brings along the the uh, medical team there and yeah, so yeah. went and saw one of the docs there and and uh, took care of the issue uh, that was in Des Moines and uh, took care of the issue and that was just really a little chafing issue that I ran into that he went and he took care of and. Uh, then uh, went to the Y there, and it was um, uh, went to swim, so that helped out with that. Which is the Y had a really nice setup uh, from where you got got off that you could go to the Y, and they had food, they had snacks, they had, that was all free will donation, and for ten dollars to use the the um, the uh, showers there and use the whole facility for ten dollars for that day. So you found a, a hidden gem is what you found. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. already a, 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 a member of the Y, so that was my plan in Des Moines going there anyway. Mm-hmm. But they had all this extra stuff, and it was – the only thing that was disappointing was they had lemonade, but there was no vodka in it. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know. I'm sure that you had plenty of other opportunities for that, right? Oh, there might have been a stop or two. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Well, Charlie <laughs> or Charles, thank you so much for being on the podcast and kind of sharing your story. And yes, ma'am. We'll have to reconnect next year when you have a whole team from the university and uh, have you on again. 
Yes, ma'am. That would be awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, Murph. Have a, have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Next up, a warm welcome to Taylor. How's it going, Taylor? It's going awesome. How are you? Good. Are you ready to talk about your very first rag bry? Oh, I can't wait. Hopefully not your last rag bry. Absolutely not. This okay. was my first, and yeah, definitely more to come. Okay, good. And you have a pretty interesting story that um, your life could have been way different. So I want to get into that. I want to talk about rag bry, but first, will you tell the listeners where you live and what cycling is like there? Yes, absolutely. So I li currently live in Iowa City mm -hmm. um, by way of Phoenix, Arizona. So my wife is a native and spent uh, 36 of my 39 years in the Southwest, now living in the Midwest. Um, yeah, so cycling here is pretty great. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's ingrained in the Iowa culture. You'll see it all the time, road, mountain. Um, locally, I ride Sugar Bottom, Woodpecker, Corville quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, the, the, this year for rag bra, I got my first drop bar bike. Ah. Um, so that was a whole new learning curve after being on a mountain bike for so many years, but I love it. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm sure listeners remember that we actually went through Iowa city on rag bra this year. So were you lucky enough to get to sleep in your own bed that night? So, yeah, I, I took a little flack for that too, by, <laughs> uh, by the way, cause, uh, you know, I was in the pork belly charter and met a lot of really cool people. And uh, I actually posted on one of the Facebook groups of Facebook newbies that I am willing to house, you know, any any riders that want to take a break and, you know, mm -hmm. come over. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I, I got some people to come over. Um, good buddy Terry and his family. But uh, yeah, I went home that night. And fortunately, it was good because that yeah, storm that was, was gnarly. the storm night. Yes. Good. Yeah. Good. And uh, one, you know, important, very important question for Iowa Hawkeye fans. Have you adapted to the way of the Hawkeyes or are you still a fan of something in Arizona? I was absolutely adopted into Hawkeye culture. So <laughs> good. prior to, you know, I was, I'm a big NFL fan. I love my 49ers being from the West. But, um, yeah, coming here to Iowa City, absolutely. And then obviously being with my wife for 12 years, she went to Iowa. Oh, um, sure. For, yeah. So, yeah, I got, uh, you know, I got absorbed. So go Hawks. Very good. Very good. OK, so you mentioned, um, you know, those trails you mentioned in Iowa City, those are all single track and mountain bike trails, even though we don't have mountains in Iowa. Um, they're mm -hmm. still, you know, man made and really, really they can be pretty aggressive. So you were maybe a mountain biker before you were a road rider. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I would say about 12 years of mountain biking experience compared to 600 miles of oh. drop bar life. So that, that's all I had coming into Ragbri. And half of that was on a gravel road because I live on the east side of Iowa City, technically out in the country. So out my garage, I've got miles and miles of gravel. So I bought a gravel bike and then I put slicks on it for Ragbri. And I would go do, you know, Gravel rides, I'd go do, you know, the Solon to Cedar Rapids, was at the Hoover Nature Trail, I'd do that, I'd do so many other stuff, but yeah, primarily a mountain bike guy, mm. so this was uh, a whole new lane for me, and prior to Ragbri, I hadn't even done a road ride, like Whoa. legit, on the road, with other people, yeah, this was all very, very new to me. So what made you even decide to do Ragbri? I love cycling, anything with handlebars. I don't care what it is. I just love being on a bike. And, you know, my wife being a native Iowan, she would talk about it. You know, it was one of our first conversations when we met, you know, she was like, oh, well, you know, there's this thing in Iowa. And I'm like, what a cool event, mm -hmm. right? Like what better way to get to know a state than to A, go from, you know, border to border essentially, but on a bike, like how cool. I wish more states did that. And it was always just, you know, I'll do it yeah, maybe next year, maybe next year. And then I'm like, oh, I got to get a road bike. So I don't want to do that on my mountain bike, even though I did see mountain bikes on, yeah, on the route, say, which, was, yeah. which was awesome. But I just, I didn't want to do that. So um, got the gravel bike and I finally got to do it. Excellent. And, you know, you had quite a scare a couple of years ago. I You wrote a little note about um, something that happened while you're on your mountain bike. Do you want to share that with the listeners? 
Yes, it was the most terrifying day of my life, single-handedly. Um, I was in Phoenix, a uh, local trail behind my house that I had done thousands of times. It was like my after-work route. And I zigged when I should have zagged that day at a high rate of speed. Um, I hit a rock really, really hard, mm. um, blew it out of the ground, and that spun the bars. The bars hit me in the stomach. Over I went, my head, right right at my, like my hairline, I went right into a tree. Oh. Uh, one of the branches and the impact was so great that in my helmet it had looked like somebody took a baseball bat and smashed the top of it that's how big it was mm. um at that moment i broke c6 and c7 um in my neck cervical mm. spine near the top and it ragdolled through a rock garden um i'll give you the cliff notes but essentially i didn't know i broke my neck but i knew something was incredibly wrong because of the pain mm -hmm. and tingling in both arms you know, I was in shock. So I make, I, I walked down the rest of the trail because I still had two miles to go oh, to get wow. to the truck. Yeah, I was not in the clear. Hindsight, I should have called 911 and been choppered off that mountain. Mm. But, you know, me being me, um, I just like, I was like, no, I can stick this out. I walked down the rest of it. <clears throat> Friend met me in the parking lot, took him to the ER and they're like, well, you're getting emergency surgery. You have two broken bones in your neck. You're lucky to be alive, much less you walked in here. Wow. Um, so, yeah, got the surgery. And this happened about two or three weeks before my daughter was born. Mm. So I, I kept this off the wife's radar as long as I could. <laughs> Ultimately, <laughs> you know, I, I did have to call and tell, hey, honey, um, something <laughs> happened, you know. And, and I, 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 again, I'm like, trying to keep her calm because stress can induce labor and i'm like i'm not gonna miss that so yeah i um i took the neck brace off during delivery because i'm like you know I, i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna have a neck brace on for this for this moment and these pictures and i yeah just uh it was wild but the um the surgeon told me that they have a saying in that field c5 lucky to be alive and i broke c6 i was one off Wow. And you had, I'm assuming, a successful recovery because you went on to do your first rag bri. Yes, it was a miraculous recovery. The surgeon, wow. um, a few of them actually, when I came out of surgery and was about to be uh, discharged, there were like four of them standing in the room and they're like, we've never seen anything like this. Like, mm. I, I walked out that day and they're just like, this is unbelievable. Um, you have a lot to be thankful for. And mm -hmm. I followed the, um, the PT schedule. I went and did my appointments. I, I did everything I was supposed to. And believe it or not, like six months or so later, I got back on my mountain bike. Wow. <laughs> the same bike? Yeah. The, yeah, the same bike. Oh, um, man. Definitely the same bike. I have, I've since sold that bike now. But um, yeah, so with Ragbri, it was tough adapting to the drop bar position because on my mountain bikes i'm very upright and obviously as you know being on a drop bar you've got that slunched you know slouched over mm -hmm. neck up so i would say the first couple days of rag bray you know i could feel it and then each day after that the first 10 miles in the morning i felt like i i didn't it didn't feel like i rebroke it but it was not happy yeah that's a whole different uh body style than on a mountain bike completely and obviously you know my average ride on a mountain bike is anywhere between you know 10 25 miles things like that you're standing up you're a little more aggressive position downhill this and that well you know the drop bar and ride bike, you're in the saddle the entire time mm -hmm. granted you can stand you can you move around which i did but at the end of the day you got to get back in there you got to you know you got to get in that position and stick your head up so i was like all right we got to get through this yeah, it's a, seven days of that. <laughs> seven days of that. And, you know, it's, combine that with my neck and my saddle soreness, it was just like, you know what? Other people are going through issues, too. Sure. You're not special. We're all in this together. Let's do it. Sure. Okay, so take away kind of that neck ache in the morning. Um, do, do you feel like Ragbri was what you expected it to be? Way more. Way more. I it, mean. Good or bad? I, I, oh, and great. Okay, great. good, good, good fantastic yeah so i mean i did all my research you know on the facebook groups and pork belly sent out the the emails monthly which was just amazing i was like a sponge but realistically you gotta go you, just, you gotta just go do it if you're on the fence you're like i don't know if i can do this like just go do it because 
unless you immerse yourself and you accept, you know, that, Hey, sometimes things are going to go wrong. Sometimes things are going to suck. It's not all pie and, 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 you know, Pollyanna, like there are times where you're going to be in the pain cave and like, I don't know if I can do this. Right. Like, this sucks, but that's cycling in general. And I think where I, my takeaway from it was seeing everyone around me, all walks of life, ages, body types, different bikes. I mean, there was a guy on a BMX bike riding backwards. I'm like, this, the, that is, that was so much inspiration for me. I'm like, you just got to dig deep and yeah. you got to do it. I feel like uh, that hitting the Mississippi River and when I came through, I mean, there was a really long line of people waiting to dip their tires, but nobody was cranky. Nobody was crabby. Everyone was just like, I did it. I can't believe it, but I did it. Or I'm so proud that I did it. So it was really like kind of a an emotional time just to see everyone else celebrating together, but also within their own selves. Oh, totally. I mean, I had a moment coming into Davenport where I actually teared up. Yeah. Like I had probably two miles to go and I'm like, wow, it's like, hey, yeah, you did it. Holy cow. Like, this is amazing. But it's it's over. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, it's just that adrenaline, the high, the the endorphins and all of a sudden, boom, it's over. But then you get, like you said, you get, you got to the river and everybody's like pumped and stoked and just the pain just kind of melts away. And you're like, whoa, I did it. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had to pick hills, heat or headwinds, which one would you pick? Oh, I'm from the Southwest. I'll take the heat all day. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a problem. There's a, there's a recipe for riding in heat. And obviously, you know, a lot of people say hydration, but you got to cover your skin. Uh, you gotta, you gotta yeah. keep whatever moisture you have, you know, in you. So yeah, hydrate, obviously get the calories in, but honestly, I left, I left pork belly camp at like four 30. I was up at four. So I, I did technically, you know, I, I got ahead of the worst part, mm -hmm. but the sun is the devil that I know. So, and then the headwind, yeah, you just, you just grab a different gear and you sit and spin, you'll get through it. <laughs> yeah. That one's more about the emotional side of it. Just, you got to suffer through it, but that's and it. and I will say that like three o'clock was kind of the uh, the witching hour where just the heat was so intense. You know, whether you were still on route or even if you're like sitting in front of your tent or under a shade tree, like I felt like that three o'clock was just brutal. Yeah, there was no relief, um, you know, and especially that was another Achilles heel of mine was sleeping in the tent. And obviously the portable fan, yes, that helped. All these things helped. But at the end of the day, you're, you're sleeping in a little hot box, you right. know, <laughs> that's just, there's just no getting around it. And I would say the best relief I found, and I, I had done this in Phoenix, is that when I was rolling into Tema, I stopped off at the Quick Star and sat in a beer cooler for 20 minutes. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. And that was amazing. And then I got my, I got everything back. I got the funk out. You know, I'm just like, all right, you did it. You're good. <laughs> awesome. Well, last question. Uh, any advice you'd give to somebody who maybe hasn't done RAGBRAI but thinks they could? Yeah, I was thinking about that. So if I could go back and tell myself, what would you do different? I don't think I would do anything different in that do your research, talk to people, gather intel. Um, obviously, you're going to need seat time because at the end of the day, nobody's going to ride that bike for you. Right. And you can get all the data you want, but you got to get the legs, the lungs, the butt, the back. You got to get all that prepped as much as you can before you go. And yes, stopping off, taking breaks, all that helps. But the more you put in free, the less you're going to suffer during. Well, well said. Yeah, you can't just hop on a bike and ride 500 miles and think you're going to have the best time ever. No, you're going to ruin somebody's week for, for, for recommending that advice. <laughs> yes, yes, you're exactly right. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for being on the podcast, and you're actually kind of my neighbor. I'm in Cedar Rapids, so maybe I'll uh, see you on your bike sometime on the Cedar Valley Nature Trail or the Hoover Trail, and uh, keep on biking. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com, or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just just go bike. bike!